A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the more recent discoveries in regards to a somewhat unusual anomaly right here on planet Earth. An anomaly related to the dynamic invisible shield around the planet known as the magnetosphere. The magnetic field generated deep within the Earth that protects all of the life on the surface from the constant bombardment of the solar wind and dangerous cosmic radiation. But what you might not be aware of is that this particular shield is not uniform. It's either a little bit stronger or a little bit weaker in certain locations. But recently, using some of the most high-precision satellite data available to us, researchers confirmed that the most massive weak point on the planet, the point referred to as the South Atlantic Anomaly, seems to be not only growing, but is also undergoing significant complex changes, suggesting that there is something changing within the planet that we still don't really understand. And so let's discuss this idea in a little bit more detail and talk about what all of this means and how this might affect the planet. And by the way, all of this, as always, is based on this particular study by Finlay, Kloss and Gillette that was published in late 2025. But in order to understand what the study is about and what this anomaly is about, let's I guess briefly discuss the shield first. And here's a very good simple illustration showing us its main function around the planet. But how exactly is this generated? Well, based on a lot of studies from decades prior, researchers believe that all of this is generated by the liquid outer core that's primarily made out of iron and nickel. And so here this vast ocean of swirling molten iron thousands of kilometers beneath the surface, creates electrical currents as it moves around and as it churns around through the process referred to as the geodynamo. And while in an ideal world, or I guess in a lot of theoretical predictions, Earth's magnetic field would look almost exactly like a typical magnet, perfectly aligned with the axis of the planet and perfectly equal on every side. But in reality, it's not. The magnetic axis is tilted by at least 11 degrees from the spin axis and is constantly shifting around and it even shifted dramatically in the last few decades. By the way, the video about this should be in the description. And the theoretical center of the magnetic field is not close to the Earth's geographic center, offset by hundreds of kilometers. And it's really this unusual offset that seems to produce some of these anomalies. And specifically this really large one we we'll discussed back in 2020, SAA or South Atlantic Anomaly. In this region, above South America and the Atlantic Ocean, the magnetic field seems to be significantly weaker than anywhere else on Earth. Actually, in some places it's approximately half as weak as in certain locations on the planet. And though you don't really feel this on the surface, it does matter for anything in space. Since the field pushes away high energy charged particles coming from the sun, in this location the shield has a hole allowing the inner Van Allen radiation belt to descend to a much lower altitude of about 200 kilometers or 120 miles, which essentially starts affecting anything orbiting in this region. And so anything from crucial satellites in the orbit, or obviously astronauts passing through this, will usually be dramatically affected by the increase in radiation. And so any satellite crossing the SAA is usually exposed to much higher levels of ionizing radiation that bombards onboard computers and technological systems and sometimes causes data loss or even short circuits. This has actually damaged quite a lot of satellites in the past. And this is something that a lot of satellite operators always have to deal with. As a matter of fact, even the famous Hubble Space Telescope has to routinely shut down when passing through this region. But the most famous failure was in 2016. This involved a sudden unexpected failure of the Japan's Hitomi X-ray Observatory, a really expensive scientific mission that was launched a few years prior, that essentially failed in 2016, with the Japanese space agency eventually establishing that this was probably the result of the extremely high radiation above the South Atlantic anomaly. And so after this, a lot of space agencies started to take this extremely seriously. So this is a very serious matter for space scientists and satellite engineers. But what exactly drives the weakness here? What produces this bizarre hole? Well, apart from the overall tilt and the offset of the magnetic axis, researchers believe it's linked to mysterious fluctuations near the outer core and the boundary within the mantle with one interpretation suggesting that this anomaly is a consequence of some kind of a localized field with reverse polarity growing strongly in the region, which results in a much weaker magnetic intensity. 
in earth scientists this is usually referred to as the reverse flux patches. These are essentially areas where the magnetic field lines seem to loop back into the core instead of radiating outwards. But there is another potential source. Near this location underneath Africa, there is a massive chunk of dense rock located 3000 kilometers below the surface. This is known as the African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. You can learn about this particular phenomenon in one of the videos in the description, but we know that there are two such chunks, and scientists think that it might be leftovers from an ancient impact with a planetary object, although there are other interpretations as well. Either way, this really dense mass seems to disturb the core flow, interfering with the generation of the magnetic field and leading to the observed weakening effect. But it's really because of the European Space Agency's missions that we now have so much more data and can actually make a lot more conclusions. And that's because back in 2013, ESA launched a very interesting swarm of satellites. They're known as uh, the Swarm. Although technically it's not a swarm, it's just a trio, three satellites, but they're extremely good at producing very accurate data in regards to the magnetosphere. Here these three satellites, Alpha, Bravo and Charlie, provide extremely high quality global magnetic field measurements that allowed us to track the evolution of the magnetic field between 2014 and 2025. With this picture basically showing us how everything changed in just the last 11 years. And so the most striking discovery in this case is a continued dramatic expansion of the anomaly and the physical change of the field that happened in relatively quick terms. And so here from 2014 to 2025, the region where the field strength is weakest, so below 26,000 nanotesla, seems to have expanded by 0.9% of Earth's surface area or expanded by approximately half of continental Europe. This only took approximately 11 years. And on top of this, the minimum intensity for the anomaly continued to fall, decreasing by about 336 nanotesla in the same period of time. So on average it used to be 22,400, now it's just 22,000. But even more fascinating is the change of the shape of the anomaly. It seems to have expanded and developed a secondary minimum or secondary lobe stretching in the direction of Africa. And this seems to be linked to the development and movement of these reverse flux patches somewhere beneath the core mantle boundary. So essentially these changes seem to be happening inside the planet, but once again the exact change or the exact reason is still not entirely clear. But these reversed flux features under southern Africa have actually been observed moving westwards, converging toward other reversed flux features that seem to move eastwards under the mid-Atlantic, with the expansion and change in shape suggesting that the South Atlantic anomaly may be in the process of splitting into two distinct cells. So in other words, this might become two separate anomalies moving in two directions. And the growth of this anomaly continues a somewhat long-term trend that has even been seen by some of the earlier missions as far back as 55 years ago. So this is not something that's just developed, this is something that was going on for a long time. But the SAA or Southern Atlantic Anomaly is not the only area showing rapid changes. Here the swarm data also highlights significant evolution in the northern polar region. Here there are two main regions of strong field intensity, one over Canada and one over Siberia. And the changes in the relative strength of these two regions seem to be fundamental to the overall understanding of this core dynamo process that creates the entire magnetic field. But since 2014, the strong field region over Canada has diminished. And if you're Canadian, you're probably going to blame Trudeau for this as well. Now, I didn't vote for him, so I don't really care. And on top of this, the area of strong field above 57,000 nanotesla, which is actually one of the strongest on the planet, seems to have shrunk by about 0.65% or almost 1% on the Earth's surface area. Here, the maximum field strength decreased by 800 nanotesla. And so here the entire area of shrinking seems to be comparable to countries like India. So this was a relatively large change. But don't panic yet, it doesn't mean that the entire field is weakening, because Siberian field seems to have increased. The corresponding strong field region over Siberia grown by about 0.42%, increasing in maximum intensity by 260 nanotesla, and in area comparable to something like Greenland. And so this bizarre unequal change suggests that the decline in the Canadian maximum and the growth of the Siberian maximum seem to be directly linked. But I guess more importantly, seem to contribute to the movement of the northern axis, where the northern pole shifted towards Siberia a few years back. 
Once again, the video in the description talks about this a little bit more. And because these shifts are crucial for things like Arctic navigation, because they directly impact magnetic declination and magnetic pole position, trying to understand this is, of course, super important for modern shipping and for modern navigation systems. And so to understand all of this, scientists also look backwards exploring historical anomalies through the technique known as archaeomagnetism. Basically trying to analyze various magnetic particles trapped inside various ancient artifacts, such as for example clay vases or clay tablets, which were heated and then cooled down and normally trapped the magnetic record of the planet inside of them. And so using this, scientists can normally recreate a kind of a snapshot of the magnetic field from specific times in history. And we know that something like this definitely happened at least several times in modern history. For example, during the Levantine Iron Age, there was something referred to as the Levantine Iron Age Anomaly, LIA for short. This was 3000 years ago, and during this time the magnetic field over the Middle East seems to have also experienced an unprecedented intense spike in strength that's still not entirely understood, but was probably caused by something very similar. And so studying these anomalies and trying to connect them throughout history may one day help us understand how exactly all of this works, naturally help us predict them in the future, and possibly tell us a little bit more about when and how the complete magnetic pole reversal may occur as well. We just know that right now there are no signs of this potentially happening anytime soon, but if it does happen, it will definitely affect the technology on the planet. And we know quite a lot about magnetic reversals from the event that almost happened 41,000 years ago. Once again, check out the video in the description that talks in detail about this particular anomaly. But overall, these findings gathered over the last decade are absolutely crucial. Crucial not just for Earth sciences, but also because we now depend on this space technology so much. They definitely provide some insights into the underlying dynamics inside Earth, and suggest that a lot of these anomalies seem to stem from massive, large-scale movements of the molten iron deep within the core that sometimes interacts with certain chunks of stuff in certain regions on the planet. But there's obviously a bit of a constraint when it comes to data in this case, because right now we seem to only have a relatively short time span of observations, just covering a few decades. But in this case we're discussing something that obviously takes thousands of years to change and to shift around the planet. And that's why continuation of these high quality missions is absolutely crucial, with the data from the Swarm mission being absolutely groundbreaking for helping us understand the changes in the magnetosphere. And that's why a lot of scientists today are currently advocating for extending this mission, and specifically the lifetime of the higher orbit satellite known as Swarm Bravo, because we need to have more data, otherwise we just don't really know where this is headed. And a longer mission will definitely ensure that we have have high quality geomagnetic observations, especially because we will have additional missions in the future, such as the ESA's NanoMagSat that's going to become operational in the next few years. But in this case, having continuous data without interruptions is very important. And in this case, once again, this is not just about curiosity or trying to figure out how things work inside the planet, because all of this now affects infrastructure we rely on every single day. And since we expect to launch thousands of satellites in the next few years, this will very likely affect many of them, costing millions and billions of dollars in loss if we don't really know what's happening. But when it comes to scientific curiosity, we actually still don't really understand what's up. We know it has something to do with the churning of iron inside the core, but how these anomalies are produced and how they evolve is definitely not something anyone can explain yet. Which means that we'll come back and discuss this more once there are some new discoveries or new revelations, or once the anomaly becomes something entirely different and maybe splits in two. We'll come back and discuss this more. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.